this very instant a monumental change is occurring in the marketing industry tomorrow will be nothing like what we saw yesterday what does this future have in store for us what needs to be done today to stay ahead of the curve tomorrow this is my quest to find answers to questions that have never been asked before this is where india's leading marketers share their perspective on issues that challenge entire industries this is the lead so here we are at the uh, sap office with krishnan and uh, one of the reasons that uh, uh, krishnan and his take on marketing is uh, respected across the fraternity is because one it's highly authentic two um uh, there is a certain sense of uh, change that he wants to bring about marketing uh, in marketing and in marketing leaders which i have long respected and you know many of you might not know that krishnan actually also gave us the first break uh, when we started frog ideas about 5 years back so uh, for reasons uh, such as these and many more krishnan thank you so much for uh, taking the time out to be on the leap my pleasure jatin modi is an important name these days <laughs> so krishnan for marketing and advertising have predominantly been synonymous around 7 to 10 years back something started to change what started happening and how has marketing changed so you know, i'm sure all of us are aware in the last couple of decades our lives have changed and marketing has changed consequently but let's point to one of the sing- single largest changes we have all seen which is the birth of e-commerce e-com delivers the entire business model at every touch point to the consumer so the historical marketing you talked about which is i have a business model which i may or may not be very familiar with as a marketer but i have to concoct this beautiful story and pitch it doesn't work because my consumer at the point of my story also experiences my business model and the second thing is because of social media which is another revolution we have lived through yeah my consumer can speak and be heard so the two big changes that we have to now cognize for is your brand is equal to your business model and your consumer engagement is a two way street it's a dialogue and these two simple things have radically altered how each of us have to think about marketing as a function if that is the case then uh the role of the modern marketer has also or has to undergo a fundamental change what is their role inside an organization where is it that they need to influence how is it that they should envisage their role so it's an interesting question because the marketer has to see herself or himself as integral to the business model speaking from what i am experiencing at sap because sap has a portfolio straddles every aspect of the business if if i break an enterprise into the back middle and front office the back office is a clear leader who's the cfo the middle office is a clear leader in the coo the front office interestingly enough remains fragmented so you have sales marketing service sometimes commerce and there is no single owner driving the front office so by and large you will see across businesses that the default owner for the front office is the ceo and to my mind there is a magnificent opportunity for marketers if we can lift ourselves beyond just that limited definition of marketing as the guys who you know build mythos around a product and uh, carry that to the market into the business owners of the front office as an integrated engine that really to me becomes the new mandate for the marketer and if the marketing community cannot take that mandate on you are seeing the birth of new functionalities like the chief digital officer and so on and so forth yeah. i do believe the opportunity is large for marketers because if you see the other functions uh, marketing is the one steady strategic function that all organizations have right. and the cmo therefore has a very good opportunity to stake claim on the front office but you know isn't marketing today constituted in the product itself 
instead of it being done after product development has been done and then you're trying to figure out the mythos that you want to build as you said isn't there a case so for example let's take uh, patanjali the story of the product or the marketing in the product is in the product itself what's your view on that so everything you said is right every function you named including the product has a role to play in delivering the business model as an experience to the consumer question is who orchestrates that experience in order to do this however marketing is faced with a huge challenge you can either look at yourself as one of those channels or one of those touch points along with new product development sales service etc then you play that specific role and then you head back towards what is the more traditional marketing you talked about the other is if you see yourself as the orchestrator and the custodian of the business model as the brand as the experience and orchestrating the whole front office yeah. the critical competency you're going to need to acquire is leadership and leadership i have a very simple definition which is if i have an idea and i am able to carry a number of people along who are not necessarily aligned to me or in my reporting hierarchy right. in taking that idea to fruition right. i demonstrate leadership mm -hmm. that to my mind is the single most important skill mm -hmm. marketers require today uh and those who get it are going to make a huge difference those who don't are really going to struggle to survive right so let's talk about influence for a second you know depending on the organization that you're working with uh you know even if there is influence that you're able to exert in a particular organization maybe the environment of the organization does not allow you to exert that influence so for example if you're trying to impact operations or if you're trying to impact product development um uh, the vice president over there might have a lot of challenge with you trying to orchestrate uh, that story being built in because the organization might be structured in silos and because this entire change has been so sudden how does the cmo plan to change that because it needs a lot of organizational buy in at its core as well i don't think it's a non trivial issue it's a huge challenge and that's why i said not everybody can handle it however simply put as marketers you have to figure out what is the value you add to business so marketing has certain unique advantages number 1 it always has the opportunity to work outside in every other function you refer to are stuck in the silo inside the well of their own functional definition now when you come outside in technically you can bring a lot of value through competitive insight through market opportunity you know things that are happening so that is one value proposition you should really focus on secondly marketing you will find is one of the rare functions in an organization which is strategic by definition it is not usually an operational or a tactical function it is strategic by definition so you do have the wherewithal and the freedom to lift your game and do things slightly differently and innovate people have to trust you they have to believe in what you say and i don't know any easy way of doing it so it has a lot to do with your functioning how you drive value in the organization how you partner you know the various functions various businesses uh, it's a very tough question to answer but if you can pull it off really marketing is the only function which is in the position to do the orchestration of the front office that is the opportunity krishnan i know that you interact with a lot of marketers in conferences in the work that you do as well if you had to draw a maturity curve of the marketers that you see uh, where would you place them in this entire uh, functioning and their ability to understand what is needed of them and their ability to execute it so you know i have a marketing maturity model i use for my own teams uh, which is a six layer model let's define where you are as a marketer so the base the foundational layer is the target market so to my mind the first the the table stakes to get into the marketing game is to know an audience better than anybody else level 2 is uh, what i call competencies when you interview marketing candidates ask them to list their top 5 competencies and frequently you will see they struggle you need to be able to say you know i am damn good at brand management demand generation search whatever it is define you have to be very clear so you have to be able to call out competencies which are marketing competencies 
Level three is what I call excellence. So in one of those competencies, you need to be world beating. People should turn to you to learn that competence. Now this, these three levels to me define an acceptable market. Level four is management. So if you can manage, you will bring tremendous urgency, speed, agility, time to market. Because marketing is a strategic function, right? Nobody is after you saying this quarter sales have to get closed. It's quite easy to lose urgency as a consequence. And if you lose urgency, nobody will listen to you. So momentum is a huge aspect of being managerial in marketing. Level five is what I call the strategist. The strategist is a person who creates a unique idea nobody has thought of before. And the ultimate level is that of the leader, and I already defined that. that. That unique idea you have, you have the wherewithal to carry many people along to taking that idea to fruition. Right. And let me also define from an SAP context how I would look at level six being achieved, which is when I see CMOs start making capital intensive investment decisions designed to start shifting the business model itself which should be your role, right, if you run the front office. By and large, it's not there. At best, we'd be somewhere between two and four in this model. Two and four would be? The maturity. Oh, most people would be between two and four. Between two and four in this model. And I definitely think we need, uh, beyond managers, we need a lot more strategists and leaders in the function. What percentage of people do you think would uh, function on level 5 or level 6? Maybe 1 in 10. It's that kind of percentage, which is not bad. It definitely is a shift. So, so if I go back to your definition of traditional marketing, there it would probably be 0 on 10. So from 0 in the last uh, decade or so, we would have moved to 1 in 10. But as a, as a community, we need to accelerate that trajectory. And how does this get accelerated? Because this seems to be a massive challenge, even with the work that I do. And, uh, you know, we end up meeting so many of the marketeers. I would imagine that in your maturity curve, most would um, end up at being at the max at being level four. So how do they accelerate their movement into level five and level six? I think the problem is because of the construct, the operating model of traditional marketing, which was so heavily agency dominated, and so frankly superficial in yeah. really what you are doing with the business. Yeah. Marketeers fell into the trap of outsourcing thinking. Yeah. My suggestion number one is start thinking again. Think from the context of coming up with original thought. You know, don't read some HBRs and, and quote uh, five articles. Yeah. But in the context of your business, your customer, your ecosystem, Start bringing original thinking to the table. Bring back the power of thought to the marketing team rather than leaving most of it to an outsourced agency ecosystem. And my sense is start changing the operating model. Look at agencies more from a capacity perspective rather than a core thinking perspective. And Jatin, you are probably equally responsible. I'm sure many of your clients outsource a lot of thinking to Frog. That doesn't help. So that's why your level five, level six will be relatively barren. Yeah. So I think if you are thinking about the market opportunity and you are thinking about where your customer experience can get transformed, between these two, you will always find answers with which you are fully within your rights to go and transform any aspect of the business that is important. I understand. A lot of marketers end up thinking that if I've got a certain amount of budget, I might as well spend it in in advertising uh, and that transformation you know necessarily might take a back seat but at the end of the day I, I, maybe there's a blueprint that I would like you know our viewers to understand of what they need to do because uh, a lot of them fall into that trap can't call out a blueprint uh, I do think however you know one thing I would recommend is see if you can put your money behind what directly drives business and put your mind behind what directly drives the brand. Today, it's exactly the opposite. So we thought SAP has tremendous capability in digital 
curriculum, etc. We know digital literacy is a huge challenge for India, especially in semi-urban and rural areas. We also know SAP's customers who pay about 65-70% of India's corporate tax have massive reach. So we launch a program called Code Unnati in June of this year with ITC and LNT. And Code Unnati <clears throat> is targeting many millions of Indian youth to become digitally literate within the next two. In fact, from June till now, 30,000 people are already onboarded in LNT and ITC catchments and we will now join hands with more customers. From a marketing perspective, the Code Unnati launch cost me one press conference and Habitat Center. So lunch for 70 journalists. Most people spend more on their children's wedding. Uh, or actually, birthdays. Or birthdays actually. <laughs> wedding to is much larger. Code Unnati delivered 480 million impressions on social. It is globally for SAP the largest social media campaign in the history of this company worldwide. So my sense is you can do a lot if you apply your brain to the brand. But over the next three to four years, uh, how do you see marketing evolving? How do you see marketeers evolving? And how do you see skill sets that are needed to perform well in marketing uh, evolving as well? I think marketing has to become a market making function not a market transacting function. It is the marketeer's job to keep an eye on the emerging opportunity and say, I can monetize this new market. In order to do that, to my mind, you know, marketeers may need to start thinking a bit like startup entrepreneurs, perhaps more creatively, expanding your addressable market, finding incremental markets, expanding product usage, all that stuff. The time is now. Perhaps all that stuff we didn't do because when you are in a low growth economy or when you are in a saturated market, it becomes a bit theoretical. Today all of that is possible. So the skills you need are that of the market maker. From the way that you are articulating the role of the marketeer, do you think in the future a lot more CMOs have the potential to become CEOs? Absolutely. So if you acquire leadership as a competency and you acquire the front office as your playground, you understand the consumer, you understand the revenue line, mm -hmm. and you can orchestrate many other leaders. Mm -hmm. It's a no-brainer. I understand. Krishnan, a lot of your messaging today has been focused around maybe the CMO that might be listening in or the CMO minus one that might be listening in. Uh, what would your message be to mid-management in the marketing organization or maybe entry-level uh, you know, recruits or cadres in the marketing organization or people in colleges that might be viewing this? You know, ingrain certain key principles, many of which we referred to during this conversation. To be a good marketeer, always think about how you will open minds. Number two, always focus on the impact and not the transaction. Number three, forever be the outsider. Always think outside in because that is the mindset that most organizations rapidly lose. And finally, you know, my sense is as marketeers, we need to have a lot of fun. You must enjoy the job tremendously because it's a very rewarding job. It, as I said, it's a very privileged role to my mind. You are a creative function, you are a strategic function, you are always facing off with the market, with the customer. There is never a dull moment. So always stay stimulated, put in huge amounts of energy, be interested and enjoy yourself like anything. That is the beauty of this function. You also have a band. And since you have touched upon enjoying, I think uh, that is a side to you that Maybe not a lot of people have seen, but I certainly have. And uh, it's it's a side to you that I tremendously enjoy. Um, a band called Contraband. Yes, so I frequently like saying, you know, I never had startup aspirations. Contraband is my startup. But the currency of Contraband is not money. And that's the title of the album we're just about to launch. Um, so Contraband is a unique mix. So there are a bunch of people who are senior professionals and managers in companies. And there's another bunch of people who are hardcore musicians. So some of the greatest musicians from Parikrama are part of Contraband. 
And our idea is encapsulated in something we call create, not just consume. The music we sing, we call it white collar rock. And where all of this was born is because we live in this world, right? Most of us work, our colleagues, our, our, our environment is the white collar world. And we believe what we see in this world is most people have outsourced their self-esteem to articles of consumption. So my car, my house, my club membership seem to determine who I am. And we don't think that makes people very happy, frankly. They're also deeply dissatisfied. We believe that if you could insource self-esteem to articles of creation, so you the photographer, you the musician, and we did cool stuff when we were in college. And somewhere we started, you know, forgetting those as our work life progressed. And the white collar world has an enormous implication on the happiness of society at large, right? So uh, I'm sure if Wall Street people were happy and cool, Lehman Brothers wouldn't have gone down. Uh, so, so that's it. So the band, all our music is in that zone. Create, not just consume. And that's why our album is called Currency. Okay. Um, one book, Krishnan and that you would like your team to really read? The one book I think would be very good for my team to read is Parkinson's Law. Okay. Parkinson's Law is a political science treatise written in the 19th century by a gentleman called C. Northcote Parkinson, okay. who managed to take a subject as serious as political science and poke so many holes and make so much fun of it uh, that it's incredible. So you should check it out. Uh, the utter irreverence of a 19th century political scientist is something we should all learn from. Why would you like your team to read that? I think we tend to take ourselves too seriously. And uh, again, in the spirit of being outside in, we need to be able to have a healthy dose of cynicism and skepticism in how we look at the work we do and our own organizations. So, Krishnan, this is a small momento for you. Oh. Hopefully, it goes in your Hall of Fame. Thank you so much, Natwil. And uh, thank you so much for being on The Leap. My privilege. Thank Thanks, Jatin. In the next episode of The Leap, join me in conversation with Dr. Arvind Gupta, one of India's biggest advocates of data and marketing and orchestrator of perhaps the most sophisticated marketing engine out there, the BJP's outreach program.